Dzień dobry. And for our non-Polish speaking audience, hi. <laughs> so, we missed you. We missed you a lot. And we've been waiting two years for this moment to happen. And here we are in Wrocław. SQL Day 2022. My name is Hubert Kobyszewski and I'm a chief of Data Community Poland. The organization who prepared this, me this meeting, this event for you. And we would like to introduce ourselves to uh, who we are and what we do, because probably some of you may not know it. And first of all, we are a professional association. Um, can I have my pictures here on the screen? <laughs> Just uh, one second. Oh, yeah, very good. So we are a professional association. You can join us. You can enjoy being with us. And uh, we do organize meetings, uh, not regularly for the past two years. They were all online. For online meetings, we had actually experience because we've been doing them years, you know. And, but now everyone had to wear a mask, sit at home and so on. So, okay, but I think that in September we will be back with our meetings. So uh, look out in uh, bigger cities in Poland so we can uh, um, uh, go to meet up and see if we organize anything. We will still organize online meetings. So anywhere you live, you will enjoy the presence of data community. So, and uh, everything about our association is on datacommunity.pl and we are present in major social media. Any news, anything, uh, any announcements, uh, you will find them in, uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and so on. Uh, and of course, everyone has to sign up for, uh, for Meetup. You can see that we have 5,000 members on, on Meetup, so uh, everyone who is there gets a notification that uh, our meetings are happening. Uh, and of course, beside the meetings, we have our uh, annual conference, SQL Day. So, uh, this meeting wouldn't be happening without grateful sponsors, yeah? And uh, we've got a couple of them. And at the moment, I want to invite Krzysztof Nickel from Future Processing. Dzięki. Wow. Witajcie. Miło was tutaj zobaczyć wszystkich w tym roku na żywo. Po trzech latach wreszcie Nasze święto Data odbywa się lokalnie. Oczywiście witam również wszystkich, e, którzy nas oglądają zdalnie za pomocą platformy WO. E, witam w imieniu złotego sponsora tegorocznej konferencji Future Processing. E, firma obecnie już ponad tysiąc pracowników. Firma technologiczna e, realizująca oprogramowanie dla e, klientów z całego świata tak naprawdę i organizacja, która również staje się teraz e, międzynarodowa, można powiedzieć, bo oprócz lokalizacji w Polsce mamy również oddział w Ukrainie, e, na Filipinach i w Argentynie. A, I troszkę o e, Data Solutions, który ja jestem reprezentantem. Ja jestem odpowiedzialny, e, Krzysztof Nykiel, e, jestem odpowiedzialny za Data Solutions, za dział, e, w którym zajmujemy się przetwarzania danych ogólnopojęte. Nasza dewiza great software because we put people first. Troszkę o ludziach, troszkę o softwareze. W 2020 roku było nas 15 osób. W związku z między innymi pandemią, zwiększonym zapotrzebowaniem klientów na nasze usługi urośliśmy w tym roku już do 60 osób. Nasza siedziba w Gliwicach. Otwieramy teraz biuro w Gdyni również, że tak naprawdę pracujemy z całej Polski, mamy ludzi rozsianych po całym kraju, bo można u nas pracować w 100% zdalnie. A jeśli chodzi o software, widzicie tutaj ikonki z technologii, które są związane 
z data engineering, business intelligence, artificial intelligence i blockchain. Zarówno on-premise, głównie Microsoftowa technologia, jak i coraz bardziej, coraz więcej chmury Azure AWS, ale także technologie takie jak Snowflake czy Databricksy. Jeśli chodzi o domeny biznesowe, zagadnienia, tutaj coraz bardziej specjalizujemy się w jakichś określonych, między innymi właśnie rozwiązania dla ubezpieczeń, przemysłu, energetyki, transportu czy handlu. No i co dla, nas, co dla was mamy na tegorocznej edycji konferencji? Dwa, dwie prelekcje jutro w sali D od rana. Najpierw wraz z Tomkiem Krawczykiem zaprezentujemy wam taką naszą wizję na historię i potencjalną przyszłość, jeśli chodzi o dziedzinę przetwarzania danych, popartą przykładami tego, co realizujemy w Data Solutions. A potem Tomek poprowadzi dla was prezentację o Azure Data Lake, już zrealizowane przedsięwzięcie rok na produkcji, podzieli się doświadczeniami, pokażę demo jak to działa. No i co, zapraszamy tak naprawdę do poznania nas, czy to tutaj na miejscu, za chwilę pokażę stoisko, czy to przez platformę online. Na, nasi przedstawiciele są do waszej dyspozycji, zachęcamy do rozmów, do spotkania, do podzielenia się doświadczeniami, porozmawiania o wyzwaniach w projektach data, także bardzo chętnie, czy to przy stoisku, czy gdzieś tam w przerwach na korytarzu się spotkamy, porozmawiamy. No i właśnie, nasze stoisko tutaj na korytarzu przy wyjściu z audytorium oraz oczywiście na platformie WA. No i co, zapraszamy, tak naprawdę zachęcamy do wzięcia udziału w konkursie. Czeka na was naprawdę atrakcyjna nagroda, znany producent klocków, samodzielnego złożenia, nagroda fajna, także zachęcamy do wzięcia udziału w konkursie, no i do spotkania się z nami, porozmawiania. Na koniec zachęcamy do odwiedzenia naszych kanałów informacyjnych, nasz landing data solution, czy strona FP, czy też nasze repo na, na githubie, gdzie się dzielimy informacjami jak i co robimy. Dziękuję wam bardzo, życzę udanej konferencji, inspirujących prelekcji, ciekawych rozmów, no i przede wszystkim spotkań po tak długim czasie niewidzenia się na żywo. Możemy wreszcie to zrobić. Dzięki, super. Do zobaczenia. Thank you very much. And the next sponsor is Infinite Data, and I would like to have Grazina on the stage. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I'm Grazina Zyszczak. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Infinite Data Services. And we are really honored today and happy to be the gold sponsor of the conference. And uh, we are impressed by the community you created. We are the first time here, and I hope that uh, we have a lot of to offer to you. So uh, we'd like to invite you to our sessions, to our uh, competition, to our uh, stand over there. So we, we are the company that uh, right now is uh, focused mainly on the large uh, uh, data warehouse, large data ecosystems. So we have around uh, over right now 100 people solely focused on data warehousing and on workload automation. So we are happy to share with you our knowledge. So today with us we have a, a nice big team uh, of architects and other people from the company. So if you would like to talk about data warehousing, about uh, data ecosystems, then please be welcome to, to visit our stand. Uh, we are present globally and we are delivering our services and solutions to uh, global customers, well-known worldwide brands. I cannot mention them here because it's, it's forbidden, but uh, if you came to our stand, we are open to talk about this in more details. So uh, regarding our sessions, so we have two plans for one for today. It's Michał Gołoś, who is the Snowflake Data Hero and he will talk about new feature of Snowflake at uh, 15.30, if I remember well, yeah? Yeah. 
And tomorrow, our two lead architects, uh, Kasia Wrotek and Przemysław Fabianowicz, they will talk about uh, different aspects of migrating data warehouses from the on-prem to cloud. So if you would like to ask them questions to talk, please be with us tomorrow at 10.20, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, on to, like, we want to share the knowledge. We would like to show you what we know, but we also want you to have fun. So we have a very nice competition for you. Uh, if you visit our exhibitor on the uh, um, app of the conference. Hoover. 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 <laughs> yeah. So if you visit this, then you can find the, the link to the survey if you fulfill it and send this to us, or you can visit our stand so we can show you how to do this. Then tomorrow at f four, yeah? At yes. four, yes, thank you. Four for 10. <laughs> at my age, this kind of <laughs> things, <laughs> not, I don't remember these numbers. Yeah, so, so then we will inform you and we will announce the happy winners of three nice prizes, which one is the Nintendo Switch console, and we have two sets of Lego techniques to, to give you. So. Please be welcome, come to us, talk to us. We have a lot of to share with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Infinite Data. And our last gold sponsor is KPMG, and I would like to have Michal here. Bravo. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Michal Valanus. I'm really happy that as KPMG uh, this year for the first time, we can actively uh, be involved in the SQL Day uh, conference, not only as a uh, sponsor, but mostly probably by also by the speakers. Some of uh, you may consider KPMG as mainly uh, the audit or tax company, but as you can see here, uh, we also do many things in terms of the Microsoft uh, world. So we support our clients uh, in terms of data analytics uh, projects starting from uh, the uh, infrastructure going through the ETL processes, uh, data warehousing, uh, of course, business intelligence in Power BI, uh, low code applications, so power apps and uh, ending up with the data governance. Uh, more to come uh, in our session. Uh, I would like to invite you for uh, the session I will be running with uh, Wojtek Piechotki today at 2 p.m., so just after the lunch, please come to uh, the room D. Uh, we'll be running the session about the Power BI optimization, and it will be quite a technical session, so during uh, the session we will try to optimize uh, our Power BI re report to make it as fast as possible. Uh, apart from the session, of course, we've got our stand, so please come uh, to the stand. Uh, we can share our uh, experiences. Uh, let's talk, uh, share the, the experiences. And for now, uh, have a great, uh, have a great uh, conference. Let's meet uh, uh, during the, the conference and uh, at the party, of course, uh, today. So thanks and see you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Emil. And now, something that you've been waiting for a long time. But before, uh, I would like also to mention the other sponsors, which are Objectivity, some um, IT, UBS, uh, DB Watch, uh, Elite Mind, and we also have a book stand. Uh, Novatech, uh, as always, brings a lot of a uh, lots of books with them, and there is some discount on them. So if you go over and ask for a price, you will definitely get a lower one. Uh, you know, other that on uh, which is on the displayed on the label, and something now, you know. The founding member of data community, Paweł Potosiński. <laughs> so, so my first thought when I when they invited me to this session was actually, guys, there are lots of gold sponsors, lots of companies contributing to this event, and I'm Microsoft FTE. Microsoft is not here. I failed. Okay, you can you can throw tomatoes and eggs. Um, apologies. Um, so, yeah, my name is Paweł Podasiński. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet some great people in 2007. Yes, I'm old. And um, 
with, and to start this community. Originally, the name was Polish SQL Server User Group. Now it's, it transformed into Data Community Poland, which is a great community, and as you can see, still, it delivers some first-class events like SQL Day every year. It's the 14th, 14th edition, but you can also add some additional events. If you go back to 2008 and 2009, we, we launched something like community to community, communities to communities events. Um, so the idea of, the, of this session is actually to share some, some thoughts of myself. It's not related to my employer. It's not going to be a presentation of how Microsoft sees the world. It's how I see the world as a data professional, one of you. And, um, the, the title may be quite, uh, you know, the title has to bring attention, basically. <laughs> and I was not participating call for speakers with this session, but uh, uh, I thought this would be fancy to put some additional fu fu funny story here. So how, how not to become a dinosaur in the, in, in the cloud age? So two things here, cloud age for sure, and dinosaur. Some people say that dinosaur is a symptom of megalomany. It's not like that. I, I feel dinosaur, I like dinosaur because I'm old, but uh, in this in this context, dinosaur you you should read it as do not do not be doomed to the to extinction, okay. And disclaimer: this will this again this will be everything related to how I see the world and how I feel the world of data changes. It's not related to how Microsoft sees it. And if you disagree with anything, it's great because that's how we build community and how we network. So feel free to share your thoughts during this conference with me. Now, um, because I am a bit shy person here, every single time I stand here on the stage, you may not see that, but I, I, I have years of training as a trainer, so maybe I can fight this stress a bit, but I need some assistant here. So my, my assistant today will be T-SQL Rex. <laughs> yeah, fortunate name, right? So this guy will be actually providing uh, his advices, actually, this will, this, will, this will be my advices, but uh, he will just say to you some, some of the advices you may get with you from this session. Now, any dinosaurs on the, on the, on, in, you, among our attendees here? Can you remember this conference? What year was it? It's not that far ago. Almost. 15. It's 2015. That was the first time Microsoft was the sponsor, and I was, I was there. <laughs> so uh, this is actually um, a session that was uh, that was uh, that occurred at the, at the very end of SQL SQL Day 2015, and we were sitting there drinking our beers. Uh, some people say they are missing the beer on this on this picture, but uh, do not. Uh, it's not about the beers. Um, the topic of discussion here was how many projects in the cloud people have from the speakers. And uh, the, the, the conclusion was not so many. <laughs> 2015, Azure was there for five years on the market. Power BI, can you remember what Power BI was in 2015? Pretty much nothing, right? <laughs> so look at what happened during those seven years, right? And, and I, my major conclusion is that today, uh, we are working, I'm working mostly with the cloud, not just because I'm with Microsoft. After this conference, a year, a year later, I moved from Microsoft to the market. I was working for uh, different partners. And I must say, during the five years of absence at Microsoft, I had like one on-prem project and everything else was re somehow related to the cloud. And the reason behind is very simple. If you don't know what it's all about, it's about, yep. It's about money. Money is important factor here because you can see that the cloud market is actually growing. How growing? Right now, this year, it's consuming like five, 500 billion dollars. Like this is the cloud service market worldwide. And if you look at the, uh, some other numbers, working, working, yeah. It also, it also happens to influence 1.3 trillion, huge number. Uh, of budgets uh, that IT have to spend on, uh, on, on its infrastructure, basically. Now, the other part is how many companies are using at least one cloud service. It's a lot. And also, if you look, 
at some other number, fortunately, it's not like everyone is pushing everything to the cloud. So if you're, if you're a, a fellow that historically learned a bit of SQL, worked, ha worked hardly with SQL Server on-prem, you're not lost, but you have to adapt a bit. And th this session will be about, about adoption and how, how you should change. Now, there are some prophecies on the way. The, the market is going to grow. 600 billion next year. Hopefully, let's see how it goes. Now, a bit of hypes. I know Gartner is a kind of marketing staff, but if you look at this, it's not just how some mysterious Gartner company sees the world. It's also what really happens on the market at some point, because uh, maybe people are reading Gartner and they follow the patterns they present, or maybe it's the other way. But anyway, if you look at this hype uh, describing some, uh, some major topics for data management this uh, previous year, you will notice that some of those topics actually happen. Like lake houses, like data management and governance being more and more important, like data ops. Well, try to, try to think without the data ops in the cloud. And about data ecosystems, which means that, you, that, you, that we start to build more and more comprehensive platforms for dealing with data. Okay, so actually this change and this switch towards different topics is, has, has its reasons. It's, uh, it's about how the world changes. If you look at how we live today and how we live for the last three days, uh, three years, it's like, would you expect us to sit at home and, you know, seeing only your, your screens, whatever, whatever number of screens you have, and uh, spending a lot of time in your, in your, uh, in your room, basically, and uh, not meeting people, not, not, not attending events, um, working remotely more than ever. This happened, actually, right? And I'm not just saying about this. Now we have, unfortunately, we have a war in Ukraine, so this actually changes a lot. And uh, the world is actually changing as well with, with the pandemic, with wars. So we, what we see is definitely move towards speed. People are planning very short term. They want to deliver quick, quickly, sometimes dirty. Um, they want to have uh, quickly, quickly achieve some business effects, business value. Um, they care about data first and not the schema first, which makes things for data, database uh, professionals a bit harder. People want to access data from anywhere. So we, as we work remotely, we need to access data that is somewhere else but online, right? And uh, I think still because of what, how, what's happening politically, uh, we are more and more uh, looking towards regulations and security. And this makes us as uh, data professionals also having to adapt because thinking in an old way, like, like, like I used to think three years ago, is not valid anymore. So I think the, the biggest point here is you have to be ready for, for change. The change is the only constant here, right? Okay. Now, the world of data is also adjusting to that. And uh, what we see is, of course, bigger data. But it's not just bigger, it's, it's distributed. Uh, one of the topics that dominate the world of analytics today is data mesh, for example. So, hey, put the data in different domains, spread it, maybe even distribute it around the world and give people some, some piece of management over, over this data. The fast pace of technology evolution. Uh, historically, we used to work with SQL Server, which life cycle was a year and a half. And right now, Power BI gets updates every month, the same about Azure services. Um, of course, people need data quicker, faster, real time, blah, blah, blah. But also, it, 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 it happens that uh, even analytical systems require higher SLAs and higher availability in place. And also, we have massive mix of technologies and tools because uh, as, as you look at Microsoft even, we adopted a lots of, lots of uh, open source technologies, some, some of them with great successes, right? So 
you basically don't you, you basically don't work only with the products delivered by major vendors but also with a mix of different open source technology and if you if you see on the trends on the market you, you will notice probably that uh, the major the major vendors are putting all the gravity towards unified platforms not going to provide any any examples but you will see a lot of examples during the sessions and last but not least when, we, when it comes to money, it becomes more and more important aspect of, of the projects. Everybody wants to see uh, not just uh, the business value coming from the projects, but also optimization of costs, which is a part of your project. So you have to think with money a bit, a bit more. So the takeaways of this slide is actually, is, are actually the following. You should look at the trends. Uh, I would say that being an expert is a great thing, but being a, a guy with helicopter view on the world is even better. Another, another part is you have to test a lot and not be afraid to fail. Uh, historically, I used to be, I'd say, I was, and I'm still probably, I'm, I'm still probably I'm a perfectionist, which is a bad idea in the cloud world because you have to fail quite often just to test that something not, does not work as you expected. Um, and the, the last thing is, please take, take care about the budgets and the pocket of your customer with your deployments. Now, uh, the example from my last few years is uh, data warehousing and whatever, whatever comes to big data, basically. It's not just warehouses, it's about lake houses, lake, lake, data lakes and so forth. So um, historically, we used to work with systems that required a lots of tweak, lots of tweaks optimization i was i was quite good at indexing basically right now you see that the world is turning towards software as a service uh, platform as a service serverless solutions which basically take some some of the responsibility from you and puts on the, put it on the vendor the other thing is that uh, people want to see transparent scalability so, which means that you you don't have to take care about how the, the structure of the cluster aligns to the number of records in the table that you're actually processing. It should, it should happen automatically. And also, uh, dealing with democratization in a hybrid workspace, which means that not everything is in the cloud, basically. You have to connect those two worlds because lots of things are still on-prem. Microsoft is not 100% is not cloud company at the moment. Um, and the other thing is you have to handle much more different workloads at the same time and probably ideally with pretty much the same set of tools, the same platform, and serve as a high concurrent, real-time, prepared for predictive analytics stuff. The takeaway of this, everything that is related, if, if, you, if you consider yourself as a data platform professional, you definitely have to think about business value first and not the technology. It's always this way. And uh, really, if you focus only on being an expert in knobs, tweaks, and how to tune the system, you may one, one day you may wake up and see the vendor changing your favorite system in a way that will erase all of your duties, basically. Or the other vendor provides something like this. Now, um, what did not change? Fortunately, not everything changed over time. And uh, so business needs is the first one. I mentioned that already. But also, uh, there are some things that, should, sh that shouldn't be changed if you move from the on-prem to the, to the cloud. One is code versioning and source control. So right now, we talk about DevOps, CICD, and stuff like this. So please make sure that you do not do everything on the production. And make with everything you do, uh, Try to work, work with everything you do in terms of uh, code. So work infrastructure as a code, everything as a code, basically. Uh, the, the only, I would say, the only, uh, uh, the, the only example of story that may not be run with this is, of course, uh, running some testing of, of technology, POC, whatever. But uh, the sooner you start with the code, the better you get. Now. Keep as few copies of data as you can. If you do analytics specifically, is, is the good idea. And everything that, that becomes, that, uh, that is useful for tracking how data lives in, in the system and in, in the platform 
is, is a great idea. Um, the, 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 the good thing is also that you, uh, you, have to, you have to still manage modeling. So if you're an expert on, on how to model data, this knowledge is still valid and it, it basically moves to, to the cloud. Uh, I'm not going to say seamlessly because there are some changes over time, but uh, you, still, you, still may, you still may benefit from being an expert on data modeling. Um, and SQL, fortunately, is still number one language. So um, the, definitely, if, if you learn SQL, there is something that you have, that you can use basically everywhere. And uh, the other part is uh, Murphy's, Mar Murphy's rule is still working in the cloud even, even more than ever. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the advice is be happy if you know this, if you know SQL. Now, do you know what it is? Unfortunately, it's not Microsoft stock. I mean, the red one. <laughs> it fluctuates a bit. <laughs> this presentation was delivered once, and not at this form, but uh, in a very similar form three years ago at one of the conferences, but I'm pretty sure nobody remembers that. So if you don't know what it is, it's actually a chart presenting something from Google Trends. And what is that? Actually, it's how historically changed the uh, number of requests for those jobs, basically. So why I brought it here is actually, if you look at this, those, uh, those charts, you will see that, first of all, the red one, data analyst, is the highest. Why? Because it, it basically accumulates people having broad, broad range of different skills, right? The other one is data engineer, which is blue, is quite high. And why? Because there are serious gaps in this area. I mean, people handling with big data systems, data lakes, they are in the need, and they are well paid, right, actually. I, I don't have the numbers about millions of uh, salaries, but believe me, if you check with any Glassdoor, in, Indeed, or whatever, you'll notice that data administrator is not anymore the most, the most fancy job, and even data scientist is not the, not the one. If for data scientists, focus on the green one, you'll see that actually um, it, even, it even at some point drops. So. Uh, or flattens. So I don't think that it's anymore the sexiest job on the planet. <laughs> I'd say that uh, uh, the combination of data analyst and data engineer is the, is the one, right? And what I want to say by that is, look, uh, you have to track the market for uh, looking for the gaps, for the gaps in jobs. What customers, what partners, uh, what companies like solution integrators, ISVs need in terms of people doing projects and, and producing software, dealing with the projects. Now, um, uh, consider analytics or data engineering. I was once a developer, hard SQL developer focused on optimizing SQL. And I moved to data analytics, and I, from the perspective of those years, I must say I'm happy enough. And why? Because moving data analytics to the cloud is much easier than my migration of applications that had 10 years of development in on-prem, <laughs> right? And uh, data scientists, um, it's, not, uh, it's not offensive, but um, you know, there are challenges in bringing data science to the table for, for customers. I'm not saying AI and data science is, is not needed. It is, it is a niche, and, uh, but people really have serious problems with finding business, business cases for that, it requires a lot of knowledge, and probably guys from TIDK could say more about it, how hard it is to discuss with, with customers about uh, why, why actually you should invest in some, some advanced analytics. Um, sorry, one more thing. Uh, if you're a data scientist, feature story is the hype that you should follow basically this, those days. You will see also some of those things coming from Microsoft. Um, I believe last month we, we announced uh, putting an open source version of LinkedIn feature store uh, to Azure, so you may also check for this. Now, the evolution of data professional roles. 
Uh, I've noticed that some of the data administrators uh, are a bit shocked when they move to the cloud and start um, start working with uh, specifically platform as a service databases because not everything is is still required, right? Some of the things are basically automated by by the cloud systems. Fortunately, not all. So it's, it moves slowly, but finally those systems may get to the point where um, lots of administrative tasks will become um, automated by some, some of the cloud systems, right? Uh, what you should focus on when you are a data administrator, definitely on building hybrid solutions, so connection from on-prem to the cloud, multi-cloud solutions for enterprises. Uh, high availability disaster recovery is the point. Great, great, de great deployments, you, you, and, and you should definitely know about how to work with AWS, Azure, and GCP in terms of uh, providing those kind of solutions uh, for for your for your SQLs and, and other databases. And um, definitely the broad range of tool set that you should learn, not just SQL. You should move to PowerShell. You should move to some automation scripts, maybe notebooks that. Uh, that can connect to your databases and deliver some, some not just code, but also history, documentation, whatever. The other two parts uh, of, uh, of the story, BI developer and data modeler, if, if you're a BI developer and, uh, and you read more and more about things like data mesh, for example, you'll notice that world is, the world is focused on data products, which basically means that sometimes you will have to forget single version of truth. Not everything will be in a single central store, but the data will be spread among different different domains and managed separately, which is a bit of controversial when you when you think about data warehousing, for example. And data modeler, you will see that uh, still the, the thinking about data models is is a valid approach. I mean, uh, if you're good at it, you will you will probably handle every every single workload, but you have to adapt to this, uh, to this big data stuff because we more and more work with data lakes, with files, file systems, file hierarchies, which requires definitely a bit different approach than relational databases. Do you know what it is, Michal? Do not, do not say anything. <laughs> it's a uh, fake news. <laughs> Uh, basically, it probably never look, looks like this. I mean, yeah, it's an original screenshot taken from Azure. I was fortunate enough to grab something like this. Probably uh, some, some of those green marks uh, were not showing the truth. So basically, when you move to the cloud, please be aware that uh, this sentence is pretty much valid. I'm not sure if you, if you were not the one uh, saying this. So cloud is a state of permanent failure. Not your failures. Well, your, your, yours too, but uh, uh, mostly uh, Microsoft, Google, AWS, they tend to fail with services because cloud is complex. It's definitely more complex than any on-prem infrastructure, and you have to make sure that you understand that something is probably going on wrong in the cloud, and you, be, you have to be ready, which means that ad additional stuff you have to do is assess risks. What, what happens when Azure Active Directory sta stopped, stops working? When the region stops uh, taking uh, my capacity? Do you have answers for this? This is plenty of different, different uh, things you have to do in the projects. So I'm just warning you that you should be aware of this. Now, this actually pushed us to the thinking about data ops and changing your mind from feeling the change to controlling the velocity of change. You should change. And the change is happening, but you have to control how fast the change, the change, the change, the change progresses. Now, you have to automate things. If you don't automate things in the cloud, you just simply, you're just simply lost. Um, there is no hope for, for quality of anything, code, data, whatever. If you don't integrate it into the system, it will just spread among different parts of your cloud infrastructure and you'll be lost. There's no place for heroes, not anymore. And specifically, when you're working remotely with distributed teams, forget it. You have to communicate. I have a slide on that in a moment. Repeatable process, routine, is something that you have to get used to, basically. 
code-centric instead of tool-centric, and diverse tools. The more, tool you do, the more tools you know, the better you get, and probably you will use the, the best solution. So the idea here, you have to unlearn what you've learned for three years. It's a hard process, but nobody expects you to do it in a day. Now, <coughs> some of the technologies you should, uh, you should probably follow, SQL, Python, open source, um, CLI, RR, ARM, KQL, last thing about our last, uh, last day pre-com session with Bartek, data management, governance, security, compliance. All true, and Power BI fans, uh, yeah, DAX is here. <laughs> Um, probably not, not, very, not very soon it will disappear, so uh, learn DAX if you're, if you're working with Power BI. Depends on the context. Now, uh, Python is somehow, uh, somehow I would say, ex uh, exposed here because I think that, that Python is actually something that data professionals should take a look at first because working with SparkBees and dealing with machine learning stuff basically is mostly about Python. But it's not just about technology. And yeah, the more and more I see that people fail in the projects because of different things beyond technology. Communication, you move to the remote work. And we, the, the standard, the standard uh, statements we hear is, hey, Tomek, you're on mute. Right? So basically, you have to communicate with people better than when, you've, when you than when you had a chance to meet them face to face, to face. because most of the companies like like my company they stay online. I mean we are working remotely. Nobody wants to get back to the office um, and even fruit Thursdays do not force us to do this to do so. So um, so communication is key. Really take care about communication. If you do something, do not hide it. Keep some notes. Do some minutes of the meeting. It takes time. I know nobody wants to do notes. Nobody wants to do docu documentation. Nobody wants to go to go through the doc to, through the documentation of the meeting you are not present at. But it is important to stay in touch in different way. Knowledge sharing is even more important. If you find out that hey guys, I know some idea and you don't share this, and you don't build the backlog of ideas, and you don't keep it in a central way, basically nothing happens. Networking and community. Coming here to SQL Day is super important, I would say. Meeting people when you have a chance, in, in face to face, is priceless. Just celebrate this moment, right? Um, remote teamwork is, of course, uh, working with also, uh, I would say, a set of tool set for this, but also culture is important, right? And also assertiveness and planning. Oh my goodness, I could elaborate an hour, another hour for this. I see people at Microsoft running 25, 15 minutes meeting. I saw a tweet last, last week, I guess, from one of the MVPs. He left 10 minutes of break between the, minute, the, between the meetings and somebody put 10 minutes quick chat into this place. Ridiculous, guys, don't do this. So basically, Assertiveness, when you say no to the meeting, really lots of companies and lots of organizations, including Microsoft, uh, really celebrate the well-being, which is about taking breaks. Do not step from one meeting to another. Hey, I have to run because I have another call. It, it shouldn't work that, that way, really. Uh, so I'm fortunate I moved to the Pacific time zone right now. <laughs> I have a call in the in the evening today, uh, but those guys understand that hey, this this man actually works in Central European time, so it may be not a good idea to run a meeting at 11 p.m. his time, right? So people are quite become become empathic empathetic, but you have to help them and say no, and <laughs> yeah, and uh, last but not least, really embrace. Learning by trials and failures. If you're a perfectionist, I believe some of you can have different uh, impostor syndromes, like perfectionist, like expert. It's okay. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> and uh, really, it's hard. But uh, learn from failures. Look at the failures as uh, 
maybe not opportunities because, well, <laughs> come on, it's not opportunity when you, uh, when you screw the project, but, uh, <laughs> but run some, rep, rep, run some, uh, some retros and try to get out of those failures something for the future for yourself. And in the cloud, fail fast is the approach that should be the, the right one. And yeah, this is actually this is actually it. Community rocks. So last but not least, I will, I won't go through this list. This is extensive. As you may take a look in ten seconds, one second for each point. So systematically learn, know the limitation of this limitations of cloud services and how they interact with each other. Um, blah blah blah. Infrastructure as a code, DevOps, Phew. lots of the lots of the stuff. But the most important sentence is here, and I really, I really, I really love to, you to remember this. Change is on the way. You have to change. You have to adapt. You have to be. You have to stay on track. But moving to anything beyond what you've learned in the in the on-prem world, so adoption of the cloud and the remote the remote culture, is not the the, the task for one day. It takes time. So the sooner we start, the better we are. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so thanks, Pavel, for the great session. We've been waiting for this a long time. Wow. Ah, the last one. <laughs> Enjoy the conference. This is from Pavel. <clears throat> so. Uh, now some of the logistics. So before today, before I'm talking to uh, our on-site audience, before you go to our party at 6 p.m., uh, let's gather uh, just between, you know, Fontaine and the conference center. Uh, year by year, we take photo there, a group photo, and some of you can see yourselves in here. Uh, so you will be able to, you know, show your grandchildren. In 2022, I've been there just after pandemic. So um, the next thing is that, um, uh, first of all, this is a closed uh, area, let's say. Uh, the security guys are warned that anyone without this badge is going to be thrown away, you know, a kilometer from here. So, uh, be aware of that. <laughs> uh, the next thing is that uh, the online audience probably knows that there is something like a URL address and you can watch us and so on. This session is actually uh, transmitted live uh, at the moment uh, on the YouTube and Facebook. Hello. <laughs> and, but uh, you uh, here, uh, it's also quite um, uh, convenient if you download the application because any changes in the agenda, any announcements, uh, feedback, uh, session feedback, this is everywhere uh, all, all over the, this application and we also um, give you points for this. So there is a, a, a some sort of a leadership board there and whoever gets the first prize on the leadership board will get a, a free entrance on the next year's uh, uh, SQL day 22, the conference part. So be active there, comment, there are some forums there, there is a a Q and A for organizer, uh, organizers. There is a. There are various groups. You can also uh, set up a discussion group there, and then uh, people will follow you. You can put some questions about I don't know modeling, data architecture, whatever you want to ask, and people will. If especially if you put the wrong answer, then a, a lot of other people will try to correct this uh, wrong answer. So you can you know join like like take your friend. Ask a question. Uh, uh, your friend answers, you know, puts a, you know some kind of a wrong answer, and then everyone else will try to correct that second guy. So do it, do it there, and then you'll get a point. You'll get some points. We also have uh, some photo contests there, like every year we have, and there will be some, you know, jury, and we will select the best photo, and then we will also reward it. So go there, download Hoover application. 
And then there is a SQL. You uh, your email, which you use for registration, this is uh, the key there. Uh, you will have to set up a user there. But then from this moment, you'll be able to use it. Already 423 people, they are on this application. So, and of course, we need your feedback. So after each session, uh, you have to tell us if that was good, bad, what would be better, and so on. So, uh, and we've got 20 minute uh, long, uh, 20 minutes long uh, breaks. And then not only, you know, go and drink coffee, you've got a lot of people we've been waiting for this moment to see faces and hear voices. So use this time. And the next one, sponsors. Yes, uh, there are some raffles. Uh, they also talk what, uh, openly about their experience, uh, the people who work there. So it's just, you know, fun to go there and speak to them. And every time you post anything on social media, there is a SQL day hashtag, and we will be happy to see what you see, what you think, uh, what you've noticed, uh, how happy you are to be here. So use it. And there are people in green t-shirts, uh, and they, they have a staff, um, uh, on, the, on their backs. Uh, so if you are lost, if you don't know where the toilet is, and so on, these people should know it. Uh, also, if, uh, uh, if you notice something that you have to report, go to those people. Uh, we also have a kind of a main desk uh, near the entrance to this foyer. Uh, from the other side of this foyer, so you ha you can also go there and ask for help if you need it. So, uh, <clears throat> enjoy SQL Day 2022! Thank you very much! <laughs> <laughs>